Hey, T Sippers. Hey, everybody. I see y'all are deep in the chat today. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I have been wanting to do this show, but I wanted to give it a few days and just wait for more information to come out. But I know um, a lot of fans wanted to do a show to be able to call in, you know, state their opinion, state how they feel about everything. Um, I still cannot believe it's been a week now um, since the passing of takeoff. It's been so much going on. It's I don't know why. I just feel like this particular death of this particular rapper has been very, very draining. This one feels very, very different. I know a lot of people are very hurt, very upset, you know, asking like, you know, why and, you know, what could have been done? And, you know, you're even hearing people talk about change. People are not even starting to look at some of these music execs funny, you know, um, and I know it's been hard for me to sleep. The weather has been very gloomy up here in the Twin Cities like the past week. It's just, I don't care if it's daytime, evening time, everything is just dark and gray. Um, and maybe that's cause of the fall, you know, starting to get colder, the trees are dying, stuff like that. But it just feels like everything is just really gloomy. Maya says in Cali, it's gloomy also, wow. So there's so much to unpack, you know, not even going esoterical with it, but there's just a lot to unpack with this situation. And one of the things, that I find um, myself really looking at, and I know we had this discussion on the Discord on, during the last Zoom meeting, is why the music has gotten so low vibrational. Like why the music that comes from most rappers, popular rappers, I'm not talking about underground, I'm not talking about conscious, none of that, but why is their music like just always about the same things? Why is it the same recipe? And I call it the fuckboy handbook. Y'all remember that? I can't, I named that the fuckboy handbook years ago. I said the, the fuckboy rap handbook consists of black rappers killing other black men, um, impregnating, you know, having multiple baby mamas, you know, cheating on their girlfriends, always promoting and rapping about, you know, you know, being promiscuous, not being faithful, having a bunch of bad bitches. I call it the fuck boy rap manual. And I've been saying this for years. And it seems like anytime you rap about something per that manual, that is when you will be pushed through the algorithm. That is when you'll be pushed through, you know, the radio airwaves. But I noticed, or what we've been noticing, there's no, there's really no fuckboy manual for R&B. There's no really a fuckboy manual for, you know, country, rock and roll, um, you know, Taylor Swift, uh, Justin Bieber. You know, they can sing happy songs. They can sing depressed songs. But I, I've just never heard Justin Bieber talk about airing out his ops. He's never had to, you know. So I, I just really been thinking back to all these videos that I've watched over the years where you've had white men coming out and kind of saying, hey, yeah, there's some shit going on in the music industry, but they can kind of get ignored. You've had older rappers, you know, the Chuck D's and um, the uh, the guy from um, Run DMC, not Run, but the other one, the bald guy. Sorry, his name is escaping me, but he even spoke about it. So right now, one of the videos that's going viral again is about... Um, it's coming from Pastor Michael T. Smith, and he is an uh, older white gentleman, and he gave a, talk, a TED Talk back in 2014, and he was basically saying that Black murder is a marketing strategy. Yes, DMC. Thank you, Ray Smith, DMC. Um, he says that Black murder is a marketing strategy, and I remember this went viral a few years ago, and you know, some people paid it attention, some people didn't, but it started going viral again. And a lot of things were really clicking with a lot of people. My comment section on Instagram was cracking. A lot of people were like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. So I want to play you guys a, a small snippet. Hopefully you guys can hear it. If not, it's going to be edited into the podcast so you guys will be able to see it. And then I also want to play you guys a snippet after that of a little bit of what Kanye West was saying during, during the Drunk Champs. And they will always be drunk champs to me for, you know, for their actions. But um, he he'd said some things, like I said, everybody was so quick to throw the baby out with the bathwater. With Kanye, he's not innocent in this, right? Kanye has said some disrespectful stuff. Um, you know, no excuses for him for some of the things that he does say. 
But again, like I say with everybody, you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You can take bits and pieces that you may agree with, and then the ones, that, the parts that you don't agree with, throw it out. You know, eat the meat, spit out the bones. And there was a part that I remember watching because, again, I, I went into this not in my feelings about whatever people said he had said. I just wanted to watch the full interview. So I was 40 minutes into the interview when they decided to private it. But one of the things that he had said that I can go back and look at now that I'm seeing so much stuff happening was when he was saying, do you want me to tell you what's really anti-Semitic? And he starts rapping and he's saying, you know, I'm going to kill your nigga. I'm a fuck your bitch. I'm going to kill the nigga. Um, and, 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 and when he was saying that, I didn't really get what he was saying right there and then. And then I ran across the Lior Cohen interview on The Breakfast Club. And I was like, wow. And then people started splicing it together. I said, okay, he's saying some things that make sense. And I don't think, I don't think him saying that is anti-Semitic. I believe in that instance, that particular instance, is what him, DMC, Scarface, there's even a video of Scarface saying the same thing, that there are certain people who are running things in the industry. I don't know everybody's religious background. It is not my business. I really don't care. You know what I'm saying? As long as you're a good person, I don't care if you follow Allah, if you're a Buddhist, if you're a Christian, if you're a Wiccan. It's not my business. My personal relationship with God is my personal relationship, right? But there are people in certain positions that are approving this music. And this music has now become a detriment because see, it's a little bit easier to swallow and not to be disrespectful. It's a little easier to swallow when a King Von gets killed, right? Because that was the energy he put out there. King Von was a hood serial killer. Let's just keep that real. People don't like to call it what it is, but when you have seven bodies under your belt and you're bragging about it in songs, you're no different than a Jeffrey Dahmer to me. You just don't eat people. See, people aren't ready for that conversation. When you're taking other young black people's lives, I have no respect. I would not shed a tear for somebody who's been out here killing other people's kids, okay? But the reason why this death would take off hurt so much for a lot of people is he was never involved in a bunch of mess. His lyrics might have been, quote unquote, a little bit, you know what I'm saying, low vibrational at certain points. But then in other parts of his lyrics, he made really, you know, he said a lot of real stuff, right? But the main thing is you never found him in a bunch of mess. You never saw him going back and forth with people on Twitter, pulling guns out, doing, you know, just all the nonsense that we've watched people do. I'm sorry. Um, hold on. Did I say something wrong? Oh, somebody put a question mark. Okay, never mind. Um, you never saw Takeoff doing things like that. Like, you know how 6 9 kind of would run around with guns and antagonize people and start stuff and, you know, just a bunch of just nonsense. You never saw that from this particular Migos. So I think this is why this is really shocking people because it's like, damn, if somebody who's literally sitting in the corner the whole night, not doing anything, basically on his phone, probably texting and chilling, just happens to walk upon a situation because his cousin is into it with somebody and the person, little, the dude in the yellow hoodie, Cam, allegedly, grabbed him and then just gave him a headshot. That is extremely disturbing and evil. And to think about it, the way it was publicly done, the way it was publicly done, knowing that that 808, eight, no, 810, whatever, uh, bowling alley, there's cameras everywhere. There were witnesses everywhere. People stay recording. When you see a, ce a celebrity, the first thing you do, you pull out your phone. So the fact that it was so brazen and they didn't give a damn about who was there, the cameras, the witnesses, that is some, that is very telling. That is dark, that is demonic, and that is showing that they do not care. They have no care for human life, regardless if it's a celebrity life or a regular person's life, because of how bold and brazen it was. It definitely gave up setup vibes. But let me go ahead and play you guys these videos. I want you guys to listen to this really quick. And then we're going to take calls. And I just want to hear from you guys. So definitely raise your hand if you want to speak. Um, I got a lot to say right now. Um, forgive me because uh, it's just a lot. So uh, November 1st is my birthday, which is like the day after Halloween. And everybody mm -hmm. said that's like a real spiritual holiday and stuff. So I had woke up to the news that 
takeoff was shot. I was, I was working, and they say takeoff was shot, so it kind of took me by surprise. But also, my sister was murdered, and I found out that news probably an hour later. So Your sister was murdered on November 1st on your birthday as well? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That, same, so that same, same night, the energy was just off, and I felt it. And usually I'm having a great oh. time on my birthday. In Jacksonville, Florida, her name was Ashley Fowler, if you guys want to search it. And I'm saying this because she was wow. killed by a man, that a black man, you know. And it, it's hard because I'm a black man right now. But like I said, right now we have a sickness going around our community. She was killed by a black man who was mm. who already has victims and strangled people and already hurt other women and should have never been out of jail. Okay, so um, basically... Um, I feel very, very like upset about the whole takeoff situation um, mm -hmm. just because he was one of my favorite, like he was my favorite Miko from Jump. I just love a bass voice because my voice is so high. So I've mm -hmm. always loved like a bass voice. And um, I feel like he was very underrated because he always like when his verse came, it always shut down Quavo and Offset's, in my personal opinion. It always shut mm -hmm. them, like, because he will come off so strong in that voice. He had a voice that really reached out to people. And, like, I loved how I'm a Gemini, too, so I'm all about my privacy. And I loved how private he was and things like that. But um, I really f have a side eye to QC just because... Like when Marlo passed and like um, they had another wavy navy, he passed like they've had like a lot of different artists just pass on their label. And it's like a money grab. I just feel like it's a money grab. Anyway, this situation hit me personally because three days before take up got shot, my brother got shot. Oh, no. Uh, it, around the same week that he that take off got shot as well. And he, thank for the grace of God, he's okay. He got shot in the pelvis, but he's for, for the grace of God, he's okay. My was thing, this in America? Yeah, in, in America. the states. Where? Massachusetts. Okay, Massachusetts. Okay. Mm -hmm. My thing is, if we want to support our artists, let's support them when they are in this earth. Don't support mm. them after the fact, because that's the thing that's going on. There's some, mis you know, you know, there's some creepy shit going on. It's real here. We don't realize we had to think twice before, before confronting a situation because we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know what could happen. We can get shot anywhere, any place. This is not the first or the last thing that's going to happen. It can happen anywhere. And to the other people who's hearing this, be careful out there because we don't know. And it's and thank yeah. God, God that my brother got was safe because I, he wouldn't have left behind his own daughter. And yeah, it's gonna be big. It's gonna be Are big. I feel like it? yeah, I'm on the east side. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it it we the city really feels it, and uh, but I, I say this though, and then I ain't trying to sound like Doctor Phil in here, like I got all the answers, mm -hmm. but I, me and my partners, we've been talking like this for a minute, right? Just like, man, that's a lot of negativity going on, you know. Woo, woo, woo. And I lived that life and did a lot of crazy stuff. <clears throat> it's really about like we really don't know how to heal. Mm. Like we know how to talk about our trauma, we know how to talk about our pain, but we don't know how to heal and get past it. That's why we stuck. That's why when we put out music, all we could talk about is the pain. That's why I miss Tupac because Tupac would say he gonna put out the pain, and then afterwards he gonna say, okay, now what we gonna do with it? Okay, how we gonna deal with it? Okay, this is what we do. If we want to really do this, then we need to do this. See, but nobody's talking about like what's the next step because I think that. A lot of people emotionally are just stuck. You know what I'm saying? Like even in yeah. when you meet people, a lot of people don't do that. Like, um, and I think that that's what the problem is. Everybody's just stuck. Nobody's healing. Yeah. And let me let me ask you this. I talked yeah. about this a few years ago. That I believe a lot of people suffer from hood PTSD. Growing For up sure. in the hood, you get exposed to so much traumatic shit. Like I got exposed to more traumatic shit from the time I was eight till about 20 than I've ever in my adult life. And you have a lot of people who witness drive-bys. <clears throat> I went to probably like 10 funerals by the time I was a senior in high school, you know, close friends and stuff like that. But we don't get counseling for none of this. Think about no. when people go to war, right? And you're in <laughs> Iraq and you lose a comrade, you lose a fellow soldier. They have counseling for you. You know, yep. they, they have mental health services. 
What happens when you're a kid and you're witnessing death at the death at the death? Your cousins, your big brother, the big homie, you know what I'm saying? This female, that female. And you don't go to counseling. They, they didn't even have no services for us at our school. Right. You know, we you, you're walking past this person's locker every day like, damn, I remember I used to talk to such and such in front of the locker. There was no counselors for us. So you're right yep. about that. We, there's nothing to heal our pain when you right. come from certain situations. I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people, and I think especially people of color, are empaths. They're mm. real sensitive to everybody's spirit. They're real sensitive to, like, energy and frequencies and stuff, right? They did an experiment with water and frequencies one time. They sat water in a room with classical music and sat water in a room full of uh, satanic rock music. And the water in the room with the classical music came out purified, and the water with the rock music had impurities in it. It's like a study on YouTube. Like, this is a real thing that they did. Well, most of our bodies are made out of water. So what we soak up around us, like frequencies and energy, is very real. So when we around this all the time, we soaking it all up. And then because we don't know how to get to the next step and, like, fix it, we end up spitting it right back out. So it's really just like a cycle. Like, we, we don't really do nothing to change it. You know what I'm saying? Like, trouble... Trouble passing. I got close family and friends that's related to trouble. Like that really hit home. And then when takeoff passed away, it's like back to back stuff going on in a city that it's like, <clears throat> it's just, I wouldn't blame it on the music and say it's about the music. I say it's about the people, man. Like the reason why country music and quote unquote white music, they don't have a lot of deaths and killings and all this other stuff. Is because <clears throat> they ain't carrying around as much trauma in their music. I mean, you might have some people talk about, oh, I broke up with my gal and I'm drinking, driving a pickup truck. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers. To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support and stay tuned for the next video.